Welcome to the Alpha Training and Consulting's online training program. Today we're going to answer the question, what is statistical significance versus practical significance? A very important topic. And remember, we do prepare students for ASQ certification exams. We have some great classes. We've been doing this for over 20 years, and we've become very good at it. So hopefully, if you uh, decide you need an ASQ certification, you'll consider Alpha Training and Consulting. All right, let's get back to the question uh, of statistical significance versus practical significance. Well, remember what inference studies are all about? They're designed to answer the question, did something change? And you always make that statement, yes, it did make a difference. Uh, and this is our traditional uh, problem that we've been working on, distribution of original tumor growth rate prior to treatment. And then you create a treatment and it moves the average over, as you'll recall. And we're trying to determine, did the treatment make a difference? Now, uh, remember, I'm just reviewing here, the shaded area where this population distribution uh, goes over the average of the um, treatment sample, that is the probability that I'm wrong. That shaded area is the probability I'm wrong when I said, yes, it did make a difference. And uh, the area represents the probability that I'm wrong. It's called the p-value, if you'll recall. We've covered this earlier. I'm just reviewing it here because uh, I want this video to be helpful to you. Okay, with that being said, a little summary there. What is statistical significance? We've covered this also. Alpha risk equals 5%. Remember, alpha risk is the risk I'm willing to take. You have to be willing to take a risk when you do these types of uh, inference studies or hypothesis tests because these are continuous distributions, which means there will always be some overlap. So you can't take zero risk. So you have to decide what risk you're willing to take. The most common risk you're willing to take is 5%. Again, the risk you're willing to take is called alpha risk. The p-value is the actual risk you're taking. So if the actual risk you're taking is less than the risk you're willing to take, it's considered to be statistically significant. Let's just read that again. When the p-value is equal to, and remember that's the p-value, that overlap. When the p-value is equal to or less than the alpha risk, then the study is considered to be statistically significant. But it doesn't mean it's practically significant. Okay, here's a, another example for us. This time the p-value is greater than the alpha risk, so I'm only willing to take 5% chance of being wrong when I answer the question, yes, it did make a difference, okay? I'm only willing to take a 5% chance of being wrong. Well, in this case, you're actually taking a 25% risk of being wrong when making that statement. When the p-value is greater than the alpha risk, then the study is considered to be statistically insignificant. So again, p-value less than alpha risk, statistically significant. P-value greater than alpha risk, statistically insignificant. Now, here's another example, my alpha risk 5%, p-value 2%. So this is statistically significant. However, let's say, yes, it is statistically significant. However, um, the objective of this study, of this treatment, is to save the lives of the patients uh, from cancer, from tumor growth rates, okay? So it's not good enough just to reduce growth rate. It must reduce it enough to where the patients can go on and live their lives in health and prosperity. That's the goal. But if a problem is statistically significant but does not solve the problem, so yes, we significantly reduced growth rate of the tumor, but guess what? The patients are still dying. Yes, they suffer for another three months before they die, but that's, uh, that didn't reach the objective. So in this case, it would be statistically significant, but not practically significant. So let me read that. If a problem is statistically significant, but does not solve the problem, then we would say that the study is statistically significant, but not practically significant. And so a very important distinction there. And so the goal is, the goal is this, to, make, to set up the test so that when it shows statistical significance, at that same moment in time that it shows statistical significance, it's also practically significant. 
And how do we do that? Well, per the central limit theorem, we can choose a sample size. Remember, uh, if you work with averages instead of single events, the distribution shrinks in. So you increase the sample size uh, to work with the averages until you get just the right width so that when it shows statistical significance, it's also practically significant. But for that to happen, you have to choose the exact right sample size. And there's formulas for those sample sizes. Maybe we'll cover that in a later lecture. But really, uh, we met the objective here of this lecture in discussing what is statistical significance versus practical significance. And again, how do we get the two to agree with each other? By adjusting the right sample size. And in many industries, regulators especially, such as the FDA, when you do studies, they expect you to run the studies with the right sample size. So when you say it's statistically significant, it's also practically significant. And if you don't do that, you run the risk that they will not accept your studies. I know. I've had clients uh, make the mistake of running the studies without doing the calculation on sample sizes, and they reject the studies. And I have to write a report trying to convince them that, uh, yes, uh, we understand, but we accidentally got it right, if that's a possibility. And it does happen sometimes, to be honest with you. But my point is, be careful. Uh, when you do statistical studies and take into account practical significance, statistical significance, run your studies with the correct sample size as applicable. All right, uh, what do we have here? When the p-value is greater than the alpha risk, then the study is considered to be statistically insignificant. We already talked about that, so that's just a summary. All right, uh, keep us in mind, should you ever need any ASQ certification preparation training, Remember, we're really good at it, and we'd be honored to work with you. Thank you, and have a great day. Goodbye.